So this is episode five, and today we're not going over the container, which I said we would do at the end of last episode. Uh, things have, uh, situations have arised, and uh, things need to be changed in the schedule. And we're going to talk more about that right meow, actually. So I decided to physically delay making the container for two reasons and two reasons only. First, the Kodora fabric that I ordered, uh, and that is the fabric that is used in real skydiving containers, isn't due to arrive till later this week. But despite that, I still wouldn't have started on the container anyway. There is an even bigger reason that came about, and that is that the deployment strategy had just too many what ifs and was getting kind of messy. You know, the golden rule or method of engineering is the KISS method. Just keep it simple, stupid. So here's a clip where I explain my thoughts in greater detail. Okay, so I'm about to start working on the container and the pilot chute. But before I do that, I kind of want to explain and go over some changes I've made to our little jumper here. Uh, if you have already noticed, he doesn't exactly look the same as he did before. There are some, some new changes to him. So let me explain what's going on. This build has been going so well from the very start, making this guy, he turned out better than I expected, very clean. The, the Ram Air parachute we just made turned out really well. Again, really clean, no major hiccups. It flies as straight as an arrow. And I was thinking as I was about to start building the container, I don't want to ruin this cleanliness, this nice sleek look of, of how this thing is, is operating by attaching a bunch of 1.5 gram servos to the back here and having cables run out. So you have these ugly servos sticking out. And so I was like, well, how can I mitigate that? How can I get around having servos on the outside of the body and, and just keep everything nice and clean on the inside? Everything should belong in there where it's safe. So I thought of a new strategy, all right? Instead of having a 1.5 gram servo on the back here, release the drogue and another servo on the, the container itself on one of the flaps to deploy the main, I've decided to just go ahead and deploy both of them at the same time with the flip of a single switch. Obviously the drogue will come out first or the pilot chute will come out first because it's smaller and it'll be, on, it'll be tucked in the container, but on the top. That way I want the I want to be flipping two switches and, and dealing with the release mechanism and all that. I can get it all done at once and still utilize a, a, a pilot chute. And the way I'm gonna go about doing that and the way I am going about doing that is I drilled a hole through the back of the neck here, all right? And what's gonna happen is a uh, the container is gonna have a strap on the top flap that arches over and it's elastic that you, you kind of stretch and put down in there with a little, uh, a little ring on the end and we're going to have just a single uh, 1.5 gram servo right here. Okay. I added this part last night, this little lip here, and we'll have a 1.5 gram servo on it like this. I even kind of carved out a little ledge for you, a little slot to put, put the cord in. And this will be mounted right here. You'll have the, the arm right here sticking out. And when it, and right now it's all the way back. This is, this is, this is just to kind of, do some measurement. This isn't, isn't going to be the real pin I use. But once it's all the way back like this, it will release that pin that's attached to that elastic cord, elastic cord holding down the, the container's top flap. And since it's elastic, when we release it, it will spring open and kind of, you know, give some motivation to get that pilot chute out into the turbulent wind. And you, so you just stick this in here like this, make sure that little bar on the servo goes over that that bar I inserted into the skydiver's neck there because all the tension from that from that cord is going to be pulling this way obviously because the the parachute is going to want to pop out of that container so there's going to be tension on it which will pull this little lever down towards it but that bar I put in there that you can see it's rubbing up against that's keeping it from dipping and so that little pin for the elastic band holding the container down will go right there in that gap and this bar right here will feed through it and then once this retracts it releases the pin which deploys the drug which pulls the the main out of the the bigger part of the container that's the idea at least so that's why we put building the container on hold for now so i could make these new adjustments to the skydiver's frame okay so now i have my transmitter reprogrammed for our new configuration now we'll go like this we'll release from the drone with this switch here we go we're released and a couple seconds later, we'll deploy the drone, which will then pull out the main using this switch. And obviously this hasn't changed. We'll still steer with these toggles. Again, keeping things simple. 
But then it came time to install the hardware onto the skydiver's body to make sure everything fits and works like it's supposed to. Obviously, I'll have to remove it all before I paint the skydiver. But honestly, I just wanted to get this part out of the way because it's like one of the two things that had me a little nervous, to be honest. Call them potential fail points, if you will. For this particular one, I was nervous that I only had a little bit of room of clearance with those screws I used to secure the big blue arm servos to the body mount. I really didn't want to split the wood trying to screw these in. And the other fail point being the whole releasing the skydiver from the drone thing. You know, just kind of a big issue. But we'll get to that later. So I started off by drilling slots into the side of the body so I could feed the arm actuation bars through it. We'll call them rods. Then as you saw a second ago, I installed the arm servos and it was a great success, no problems. Big relief on my end. And then came making the servo rods. And like many things in this project, they are made out of bent paper clips. Over the years, I've found them to be a reliable, cheap, easy to work with and easy to replace material. Then I screwed in a small eyelet pendant in the bottom of the arm and then attached the servo rod and gave it a test. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's alive, it's alive. After which I put the battery and receiver into the body and put the covers on. And then I brought it down to the lawyer wife and told her to hold on to it for a second. At that time I moved the arms and she kind of jumped a little bit when I did it, but she was really impressed by it. And that was really cool. Next came attaching the 1.5 gram servo onto the body mount as well. This one is for the drone release. No issues arose during this part either. But of course, I also had to cut a small slot into the chest cover plate so the servo rod can stick out of the body. We'll get back to that later. But then came attaching the second 1.5 servo. This one is for the parachute release that I spoke about earlier. And here I am testing it with the parachute riser that I made in the last episode. It will be pretty similar to what the container strap looks like when it's all said and done. Feeding it through the back of the neck and locking it in place with the flip of a switch and testing it. And again, and again. <laughs> I finished up with installing the toggle rings into the guy's hands. These will attach to the toggle lines of the parachute. And then also the rings for the shoulders that will attach to the risers of the parachute. I ordered some micro carabiners to make the packing process a little easier when the time comes, you know, so I can just pack the chute into the container completely separate from the skydiver and then just clip everything in after I strap the container onto him. All right, now let's get back into the drone release servo on the chest because this was another place in the build where I changed my strategy. If you remember back to the first episode, I discussed how this was all going to work, how originally this servo was to release two hinged doors under the drone that would drop the skydiver, kind of like a bomb from the belly of a military plane. And remember, I even tested the stress this would create the best I could at the beginning of this project. Now that I'm further along, I was able to test it a little bit better and discovered it just wasn't feasible. Long story short, having a single line pulling on a rod between two pins apparently creates less tension than a rod running through two pins attached to one bomb bay door and a single pin on the other door. The bomb bay way was just too much weight, too much stress, too much tension. So I decided to go with a single line deployment strategy since that seemed to work better during those initial testing days. And a bonus of going this route was that it would also reduce the overall weight of the drone's load as well since that releasing mechanism would be uh, a lot less. It wouldn't require any wood or anything. So the first thing I did was perform an accurate test of the deployment using several basswood blocks glued together to equal a pound and a half or one pound eight ounces. I chose this measurement because the skydiver with all the hardware installed but lacking the parachute and container weighs one pound two ounces. So all in we're looking at maybe one pound five ounces, maybe six with the parachute and container. But you know, I wanted to test a little heavier because well, that's what you do. So I wasn't all that surprised that when I tried releasing this much heavier block of weight under tension, the servo tried but didn't move more than maybe an audible click or two. So I figured, you know, well, hey, so after switching the release, all I have to really do is just briefly drop the drone in altitude uh, a foot or so, and that would create momentary slack in that line and then give the servo the opportunity to pull that, that rod back and release the load. You know, after thinking about it for a little while, I thought, nah, I don't want to have to place that kind of stress on a servo for more than, you know, a split second and, and because I would just burn it out. 
which actually I ended up doing during a later test. I also didn't want to have to have two controllers in my hands at once, one hand on the drone controller and one hand on the skydivers controller. So I took the opportunity to do some problem solving, which honestly is every engineer's dream. Obviously I'm no engineer, but still, you know what I mean. And really it only took me a handful of minutes of brainstorming until I thought of a real skydivers cutaway handle on his harness. If you watched my parachute documentary, you know all about the three ring release system. Well, this is the exact same thing. A skydiver's weight places too much tension on the cutaway cord to make pulling that cutaway handle even possible. So that weight on the cord is first distributed among three rings on the harness, which reduces the tension on that cutaway handle. So light bulb, why not first wrap the release cord around a small bar before connecting it to the servo's rod? So I gave it a try. And what do you know, it worked like a charm. At the making of this video, I haven't yet installed that bar onto the skydiver's body because I'm currently uh, sealing him down in the garage right now. I'm a couple episodes ahead, but I'll do that before I start painting him. But in the next episode, we'll pick it right back up here with the making of the drone mount mechanism itself, where I encounter more fun engineering obstacles. It's a pretty neat episode. And until that time, Godspeed.